Raven Ridge didn't have the smoothest launch for compatibility. Even outside of pre-launch reviews, we had issues getting our retail purchased samples up and running. Jay noted instability issues before launch, or well, at launch. Kyle has tweeted about frustration of trying to get the APUs working, and we've done the same. Finally, after lots of troubleshooting and some talking to AMD and others, we got the APUs working pretty much smoothly at this point. It's actually going well now. The fact of the matter is that these can actually be good products as a middle ground between discrete GPUs and game-ready graphics hardware and APU packaging, but some use cases will require additional care to get it up and running, and we'll be talking about the steps we took to get a perfectly stable Raven Ridge system, which should hopefully help others having similar issues, especially since it's actually out and you can buy it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our temperatures. Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like Cryonaut and Hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. So this is more or less what half of the war zone looked like as we were troubleshooting Raven Ridge, trying to get it up and working. And after I sent out a, uh, a Valentine's tweet in response to AMD Ryzen's Twitter account, Valentine's tweet, they messaged me and said, what problems are you having? So we could try and fix it. So that was partially helpful. The rest of it that got us to a functional, stable Raven Ridge was just, just beating our heads into the wall until it worked for like 16 hours, basically. Uh, so it does work now. That's good. We can go over all the issues. But a uh, recap of the problems. So some of these you've seen other YouTubers talk about probably. I believe Jay talked about this first one, which is video TDR failure. It's a blue screen of death. We had the same problem and we were able to find a solution. I'll go through the solution separately. Other issues that we've encountered uh, or folks we work with have encountered include large network file transfer BSODs on MSI motherboards. Not sure about the others, but I know the wireless drivers on the MSI board for sure had issues. And one of them was large network file transfers. Uh, another one is onboard wireless causing a BSOD in general and issues with uh, version 1703, Windows version 1703 freezing or hanging in uh, potentially resulting in a BSOD as well. So that was another problem. We'll talk about that in a moment because 1709 is required to get it to work. I know, but uh, I'll get there. GPU-Z had a known BSOD issue that will be fixed within days of this video coming out. Windows has a, there's a timer bug with MSI boards that we showed in a separate video previously. So that was with this board, the, I think it's a B350 board from MSI. So we showed a timer bug there where you could basically trick benchmarks into getting multiples of the score just by putting the system to sleep. And it would basically fake the base clock because the Windows timer would operate slower than real time. Check that video if you haven't seen it. So that was an issue. Uh, 3D mark installation corruption. This one's really annoying. Uh, it is fixable though, so that's good. But basically, 3D mark, this box is shaking. 3D mark would, uh, upon certain BSODs or crashes, it would basically break to a point of requiring an uninstall and a reinstall. And then finally, some boards like the ASRock Pro 4 are still severely lacking in BIOS options in general. And there is a sort of solution for this as well, but it's not really a great one. Uh, ideally, the vendors get their BIOS in a shape that is, is just better, but there are half steps for now. So the fixes, let's go through these. Video TDR failure is the big one that I think a lot of people will see. And these are all kind of wrapped up in each other, but uh, the short of this one, FutureMark uses GPU-Z technology, the tech power up utility, GPU-Z. So FutureMark uses part of that. 3 Mark requires a manual install of the newest sysinfo version to get it to not fail when you're running it on an APU. So if you have 3 Mark installed with the sysinfo version it comes with, then you might need to go to their website and manually download the new version that they just launched uh, and use that. That should fix some blue screen issues and some issues with 3 Mark corrupting itself, I think. I think they're tied together. I'm not clear on that. But either way, it'll fix one of them, and the other one will get fixed through all this other stuff. So that's step one. Uh, GPU-Z, the, the makers, Tech Power Up, GPU-Z, they're all aware of the issue. That's all done by Wizard. So that should be fixed within a couple of days at this point. 
Uh, also, running GPU-Z at all will cause a, a blue screen. doesn't matter if you're using 3 Mark, but that will definitely instantiate the issue because when you launch 3 Mark and it calls for the sysinfo file, if it's pulling the one that GPU-Z includes, uh, then that's that's where the issue occurs. The video, I think that's the video TDR failure, but either way, it, it fixed most of our problems. So uh, that's one thing you can do. Another one for Windows issues, general stability, crashes, blue screens, freezes, and hangs. So first of all, we would recommend installing the chipset drivers first and the GPU drivers second, because and this may have changed by now, but last I checked with the retail version of the product, because we bought it, we weren't sampled. So we actually did do this as consumers. It's not like a pre-launch complaint. But the last I checked, the chipset drivers that I used did contain the correct driver set for the APU for Raven Ridge. However, uh, it contained a, an older or an incompatible GPU driver of some kind if you did an express install uh, to the effect that installing the GPU driver first and then the chipset driver using express install would result in an overwrite of the GPU driver so you'd have the Raven Ridge APU uh, Vega portion not functioning. So we'd have to reinstall the GPU driver again. So chipset first, then GPU. Next thing, we also noticed that performing a clean install of Windows version 1703 uh, via Microsoft's media creation key, the USB key that you make, we noticed that that and then upgrading to 1709 could further cause issues. So basically the finding was, you know, a lot of people have version 1703 media creation keys, especially in media because we use them all the time. So if you go from that and then upgrade to 1709, which seems like it should be sufficient, that was causing some of the hands and crashes we were getting and you could scroll through Event Viewer and see them popping up. So the fix to that was make a new media creation key with version 1709 on it, the newest one, and install that clean with no Windows upgrade pathway. So not using Windows Update to get from 03 to 09. You just start at 09. And the only reason not to do that is, well, I mean, there's really, there's not a reason not to do that because it takes, even on a slow USB key, it takes minutes to make it. So. We would recommend doing that. Just start at 1709. You need to do a clean install to make sure everything works properly. And it'll just, it'll make life way easier to go that route rather than trying to do the upgrade path, which sadly did not work very well for us. So it may be different. This is a big your mileage may vary thing. All these boards have like half functional BIOS to pretty much fully functional BIOS, depending on which board it is. So that's another big factor too. Gigabyte, for example, I think has like three new BIOS revisions in the last, they have three BIOS revisions that work with Raven Ridge. So uh, that's just a shooting gallery. You pick one and you, you hope it does what you need. We found testing with the Gaming K5, which has some of the best features in general. We found testing with that board that uh, the absolute latest at time of filming BIOS revision is the one that works the best. And the two that supported Raven Ridge but came out before, uh, or at least one of them anyway, didn't work as well for us. So keep that in mind as well. You may need to try a couple of those. Uh, as for the rest, so Windows is the big one. GPU-Z is a big one that'll be fixed soon. 3D Mark was also, with a sysinfo thing, a big problem that you wouldn't really expect that to cause the issue. Software shouldn't be causing blue screens, but updating sysinfo will fix that. Uh, limited BIOS settings are kind of a concern, but should somewhat be resolved, I guess, with the X470 and B450 or whatever they call it. So for limited BIOS, although we typically don't like software for overclocking the CPU or CPU components like an IGP, typically we prefer to do that through BIOS, not through software. But Ryzen Master is surprisingly not awful. So you can actually use it to overclock the GPU pretty reasonably. It gets stuck stuck around 1650, 1655, something like that. Uh, so you get to 1650 megahertz or so if you're lucky. You push SOC voltage, you can do that through Ryzen Master as well. So if BIOS isn't giving you those options, which some of these don't, I, I want to say this one I think did not have IGB overclocking options, but I've tested so many boards in such a short period of time now, I can't even keep straight which ones had issues with BIOS and which didn't. Um, so yeah, if, it, if the board doesn't do what you want, Ryzen Master is okay. It's not ideal, 
but it's okay. It works fine. A Gigabyte, I think, has the best BIOS revision for the IGP overclocking right now, but they've had plenty of issues of their own with, with BIOS, if you kind of read through the forums with Raven Ridge. So uh, it's going to come down to your configuration, very specifically in some cases. I think that's most of the basics. So to, to recap it, if you have had issues with Raven Ridge, like we did, we bought it on day one. I'm sure people out there bought it on day one. If you had problems getting it working, hopefully most of those will go away within the next week, like this coming week. So I don't think you're going to be in the dark too long. Motherboards are kind of a problem. Uh, a lot of people were asking about upgrading motherboards where you, what do you do if you buy a board or how do you know if a board is already good to go with Raven Ridge? AMD is doing some stuff there. So if you go retail physically, the boxes that actually have the correct BIOS on it to support Raven Ridge will have a sticker on them. So if you buy from Micro Center, that'll make it easy for you. Uh, alternatively, if you have a shop locally that can flash BIOS for you, they should be able to take care of that. AMD is also, I think, doing some kind of flash kit now that I read about. So that should be taken care of. But if you're not aware, your board may show up, you put Raven Ridge in it, it doesn't boot, it's because it has the wrong BIOS in it. So you need to put Ryzen in it or figure out what AMD is doing to support your region uh, or whatever that boot kit was. So that's one of the other things to look out for. But Overall, uh, some boards, keep in mind, also won't support Raven Ridge really, I mean, like this, the Crosshair 6. It'll work, it'll boot, and it will support the CPU, but you don't get any IGP out of that. It has no video out. So make sure you look at the I.O. on the boards as well. But yeah, uh, recapping the most important stuff, clean install of Windows version 1709. Don't go the upgrade path. It, it just, it sucks. So 1709 clean install. 3D Mark, install that and GPU-Z if you want GPU-Z. You're going to have to update it later. But install them both. And then after installing them both, go manually grab the new sysinfo file if it's not included in the 3D Mark package when this video comes out. And then uh, keep an eye out for GPU-Z updates like by, I don't know, within between Monday and Wednesday is, is kind of what my understanding is. So yeah, I think everything should smooth out. It's, it's been frustrating, but it should smooth out. It looks like there's actually like a, a path to making sure these BSOD issues go away. And the thing is, like I want to call them minor issues because uh, on one hand, these are problems that will be fixed pretty soon. It's not like an inherent hardware flaw. It's more software and BIOS and firmware, like all these things working together. On the other hand, they are technically major issues because anytime you have a blue screen of death or a crashed desktop or a system hang. That's a major problem. That's like sev one issue when you're reporting it and testing. So, but it should be fixed. Uh, if you've had problems, that's how to do it. If you haven't had problems, that's awesome. I'm happy for you. You, you whatever you did worked and you got lucky too. So uh, yeah, not everyone will have issues getting Raven Ridge working. However, clearly just from the reviewer community alone, pretty much everyone's had some kind of problem along the way somewhere, whether it's just wireless drivers causing a crash or this video TDR failure that is more or less resolvable. So yeah, our platform is finally fully stable. Feeling good about testing it now for performance. Doesn't seem like it's gonna be crashing all the time and corrupting stuff anymore. So keep an eye out for that. Subscribe as always for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly and go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you'd rather support that way. Thank you for watching. Hopefully it works out for you. If you bought Raven Ridge, I'll see you all next time.